I'm just not a, made to be a mom. I, I mean, maybe I should never have had this boy. Maybe he would be better off with somebody else. When he learned something, he would do it that way and only that way. If you started to play with a toy with him and tried to show him a new way to play with it, oh, here's a matchbook card, why don't you roll it on the floor? He would get so mad that he would he would start a tantrum or he'd get mad at, at me or another child because we were not playing with it the way it should be played with. He couldn't take naps anywhere but in our home at the same time. So unlike all the other families, I had to rearrange my day. I could not be in the car and I couldn't be in a restaurant when it was time for him to have his nap and we could clock it. He got to the point where he would hit his head on the wall and say, I just want this to stop. And it would be over the simplest things. I can't tie my shoe. I don't know how to clean, you know, I don't know how to pick this up, M mommy. I don't know how to put this game away. Anytime you ask him to do something he'd never done before, he would go over the edge and said, that's it, I, I can't do this, I can't. I can't be his mom. He's fighting me on everything, from tying a shoe to trying to do a simple play date out. This is not working. And, and my husband said, go, go get help. So rather than going to a pediatrician or a child development psychologist or the ones that I had been seeking help from, I went to a Christian counselor and she listened to my love of my family and she said, I want you to go home and your only homework is, is I want you to go research this word and it's called Asperger syndrome. And I went home and it's like the crystal. I mean, when you start reading it, it resonated so true. And all of a sudden the pieces started filling into place. It was such a relief to be able to say, I have words in which to communicate to others what my son's needs are. I looked out and in 2007, the year we got the diagnosis, there was the eye touch. I saw it as a already ready-made delivery system for a, or delivery tool for a system that I could create for my son. So you look at that and I started creating albums for my son. Predictable albums, how to tie a shoe, 22 steps, drawing it out, putting it in a photo album, um, one step at a time pictures into a photo album and putting it into his eye touch. Did that with how to wash his hand, how to clean his room, how to do his swimming lessons, what are the rules of, you know, of going into a locker room and coming out. I taught him so much from this, but he looked just like another kid on an eye touch in front of all of his peers. In fact, they really wanted one back then. That was pretty cool. My advice is to forgive yourself. There is a time after the diagnosis that I went back and I felt just the most painful shame for m the mistakes I might have made, the things I might have said. I had to forgive myself and then say, okay, Maya Angelou, now that I know better, I can do better, and I am the best advocate and my best friend um, for my son. And I am, my husband and I, are the only constant in his life from now until the end. He is the number one. So everything has to be for him to do his best on his own with the best degree of confidence and independence that he will ever have, whatever that looks like. <laughs>